<laughs> Attention, the following video is going to totally kick ass. If you enjoy any of it and or have a large penis, please click the like button below. Enjoy. <laughs> What is going on guys? I am Nobody Epic and this is Awkward Situations. If you watched this series before, you probably know what to do, but I didn't want to take too long on explaining that because I had something serious to talk about before I actually started today's Awkward Situations. I've been seeing a spike in more serious Awkward Situations in the comment sections lately of the Awkward Situations video and that's totally fine because you guys kind of drive the tone of the series. It's my series that I do, but... I share it with you through your experiences, I tell you my experiences and whatnot. And there's been more serious ones, so that's totally fine, I can vibe with that. But there are some situations where it is very obvious that the police need to be called. And if you see something in the comment section where so-and-so says, my dad is abusing me, or somebody is abusing me, or I fear for my life, or just things like that, please do not harass that person because it's really easy to anonymously anonymously uh, I kind of choked on my word there it's really easy to anonymous not nah, fucking fuck that word it's really easy to say that you should call the police when you're outside of the situation but if you're in a situation and it's gonna break someone's family up or it's your own dad or I don't know why I'm saying dad like there's oh, there was a bunch of random situations I just saw a couple that were like my dad was abusing me and it's like all right please call the police so I message them and yeah, so if you see stuff like that in the comments where somebody's life is in danger or there's obvious law breaking, please calmly, calmly, I don't know why I can't talk today. It's because I ate so much gay bacon. I got some sour fucking sugar in my mouth. It's messing up my words. <laughs> Good excuse. You can't even speak English, man. You have you. But yeah, please calmly tell them to call the police. That's what I do, at least. I message them. But I can't message all of them because there's over 2,000 comments, so... Let's use the common sense approach for that stuff, and we will do whatever type of awkward situations you guys like. Also, never be afraid to talk to anyone, like counselors or therapists or anything. I haven't really talked about this before, and I don't care to. I mean, if you guys want to know, if you guys ask me, I'll tell you. But I have been in therapy before and for an elongated period of time, just for my own mental health issues, stuff that runs in my family. And I'm not ashamed of it. It's fucking normal. It's, <laughs> it's, but it's in the United States, we have trouble getting coverage on some mental health issues. I remember my family has good insurance and I still, I had to pay for some of my own therapy sessions because it's hard to get that stuff in the United States. And it's almost like mental health is looked down upon. It's not normal, but your brain is so complex. And some of these issues that I see in the comments talking about suicide and depression and all that stuff, that is very serious shit. And you need to talk to people about that. And if you don't, it's not normal. So uh, that, fuck, that was a stupid double negative. And I'm sorry I dragged this on so long, but we'll get into awkward situations right now. Thank you for listening. Today's first awkward situation says, Nobody, this was my first year of college and I got into the University of Illinois. In the Big Ten, my parents were so excited even after having to get loans for $45,000 a year. When I got there, I went from being a straight-A student in high school to a complete flunk out. Well, after my first year, I have been kicked from the university. I didn't find that I had the motivation or the determination to study or try. How do I tell my parents of my failure? Both of the situations I chose for today's episode of Awkward Situations are not traditionally awkward, as in, oh, I was in gym class and Susie touched my boner and I was all like, oh, and I came. But I really relate to both of these situations better than many that I have read in the past. So I felt like it would be a great opportunity for you guys to kind of hear about what I'm going through currently and my thought process on it. Process. Process. I'm in a weird mood today because I ate a lot of gay bacon and, and that's uh, airhead extremes is the politically correct term. But my stomach hurts from that. But I'm going to push through it. I have been struggling with the college thing too and I think it's for the same reason that this guy has which is you get to college and the workload's ramped up the class time is dialed down so you have a lot of free time and you enjoy that free time and it's kind of like a fun party experience or almost like a vacation except it's a tricky vacation because the work is harder and the workload comes down on you faster but you don't really notice it until you're really fucking behind and your teacher doesn't give a shit because they're a professor in college and they have a thousand students or whatever and 
you're just gonna fail if you're gonna fail because you're paying for college. So I've wasted a lot of money, by the way, in college, and I could have wasted a lot more because I had a good amount of scholarship money from a nice little fund my grandpa set up before he passed away and some money I won from some writing contest, poetry, a <laughs> gay, but I excel at poetry and writing and stuff, so I was lucky, but I still have wasted a lot of money in my life that is going to take me a little bit to pay back because I didn't know what I want to do in college. And I'm majoring in communications, if you're curious, and I don't even really know what that means anymore. I regret not being a film major because that would help me with my YouTube channel on a daily basis. I assume, maybe it wouldn't, but I didn't want to be one because I felt like I would make no money in that career field. But I don't think I'll make any money in communications either. And all of my friends are film majors. And again, I think it would help me with the YouTube I don't know if that really helps this guy, just telling him about my general college mistakes. But like I said, I didn't really care about the subjects that we had to learn at the start of high school and our college. And I kind of just let my attitude about it be like, fuck this shit. I don't like doing that. And it's different than being unintelligent where you're straight up like, I don't understand what this is just saying on this paper. Is Do I eat it? That's kind of mocking tone but I just didn't care and still don't care about certain things and I feel more confident in my YouTube channel than I do in a communications degree and that's kind of bad because I can't base my whole life off of this but I can't afford to take a slight break in college because I'm almost done anyway and maybe I should just finish I don't really know what I'm gonna be doing for the next semester or two I really wish I would have taken a short break after high school or at least taken the time over the summer to really think about what I wanted to do in college because once you get into college, you don't have the opportunity to waste a lot of time trying to figure out what you do because money's involved. And people say, you know, you got a lot of time to figure out what you do, but you really need to have a good idea because that's more dollar that you're given to the university and the loan companies. And it's going to hurt you in the long run if you're not making money after spending so much money. So the American education system is fucked. I don't wanna sound like a hippie with that, but all the money you have to spend to get an education, which might not even help you as much in today's economy and going forward, I think that going to college is the safer, smarter option, but not everybody has to go to college and you're going to have to have a talk with your parents saying, I don't know what I want to do. I'm definitely going to have to take some time to think about this. And once you have an idea and you're really motivated with it, you cannot let yourself fail. That's how I was with the YouTube thing when it started ramping up and I started feeling like I was more successful and obviously my friends and I are doing well now. And I don't think that this will be my long-term future, but hopefully I find something from my YouTube channel that I can do in the long term or finish my degree in my own time. I don't really know. I'm still confused about it. I've never stuttered over my words so much trying to think about a subject like this because you can obviously see I'm really confused about it. I've talked to my parents about this stuff very recently and I don't know how I feel about it. I'm kind of mad at college even though it's my fault for not knowing what I wanted to do. I'm like, fuck the system, man. They got all these hot girls and shit trying to distract me when I'm doing my homework. But I don't know. You need to talk to your parents and say, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing in my life. And you'll find that they can relate to that feeling. Everybody feels like that in their early 20s to some degree. So if your parents can relate to that, then they'll be fine with that. And it's your mistake, so you'll have to own up to it. You'll have to pay that money back and most likely, but it's not the worst thing in the world. I'm assuming that your dick didn't get cut off in the process, so be happy about that. Today's second awkward situation says, hey nobody, my grandma has amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, ALS, also commonly referred to as Lou Gehrig's disease. Whenever my dad talks to her on the phone, it makes me sad that I don't understand her. I wanna to talk to her, but I can't understand a word she is saying. I really love her, but I can't do it. Please help me. 
How can I overcome the fear of talking with her and not understanding her? Please like so nobody can see. This situation is super personal for me because my grandma died of Alzheimer's disease. And that's similar to ALS in that you slowly forget things until your heart forgets how to pump blood. I think ALS is a little more rapid and probably more painful, but I'm not a doctor. So I don't need to specifically compare the two other than knowing that they are very similar. And it was super hard to watch that happen to my grandma because I was basically raised by my grandparents when I was a little kid. My parents worked a lot because they wanted to have money for us to have a good life and the chance to go to college and live in a nice house and all that stuff happened. And I'm super grateful of my parents for having that plan and my grandparents for helping them out. They live nearby, so it was convenient. And... I had to watch my grandma die of Alzheimer's disease. I know it was super hard on my dad too. She forgot my name probably five years before she died. And that's what happens. They slowly forget the names of their family members. They forget locations. Their short-term memory starts being lost. So they'll kind of just be sitting there and then they won't remember why they're there or where they are. And they'll have to start asking people who they don't even know, even though they're their family members. And it's really sad. What I would say to you is you have to talk to her. Even if you don't understand, you can still say, you know, yes, uh, like laugh along with her and just kind of say comforting things because imagine if you were in that situation and ALS and Alzheimer's are probably the top two ways I would not want to die. It's just to even think about forgetting everything in your life is so painful because you really live through your memories and that builds your character. But if you were in that situation, you would want people supporting you even if you didn't remember them. And that's really hard to say, and it's hard to talk to your grandma. I'm not gonna lie, at my grandma's funeral, and this was in 2003, this wasn't recent, so I've dealt with this, but in, at my grandma's funeral, I was not sad because I felt she died five years before her funeral. So it's a really painful thing, and it's one of those situations in your life where you're gonna learn that the world is kind of a fucked up place, and those are some lessons you learn as you grow up, but they're important lessons to learn because it's real. That's what really happens, the world isn't, fairies and lollipops. It's a lot of pain sometimes, but a lot of good things can come from the pain and people coming together. So talk to your grandma, support her, and I don't know. Good luck with that. That's the end of Awkward Situations. Have a great day, everyone. Tonight.